Hi everyone, thank you for joining us and welcome to the latest instalment of Share to Buy's Expert Sessions. I'm Jake from Share to Buy and I will very soon be handing over to Shireen and James here who are from Southern Home Ownership and they're going to be talking all about kind of like shared ownership, the basics, what you need to know and a huge question at the moment which is how has COVID-19 impacted the housing market? So it's something we've been getting a lot of questions um, about through Share to Buy ourselves so it'll be really good I think to cover a lot of these topics for you so we're really excited about this session. Just before we get going, I can already see a few names that I recognise from the last few weeks. Some of you are coming back each week, which we really appreciate. So you'll already be aware of the kind of format. But for any newcomers that are joining us for the first time, basically, Shireen and James are going to do a presentation for you. And then at the end, we're going to open up to a live Q&A session where we'll be putting your questions to our visiting experts. So if at all during this um, presentation, you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat section to the right hand side of your screen. There's two little speech bubbles, pop them in there, they'll come directly to us and we'll get through as many as we can towards the end of the session. Uh, also keep an eye over in that same section as well, especially under the offers tab, we're going to kind of put some uh, links up and stuff and we've also got some videos and bits and pieces for you to watch throughout as well. So that's enough from me. I will now pass over to our lovely team from Southern Home Ownership. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is James McFell. I'm a Senior New Home Sales Manager at Southern Home Ownership. And I've got Shireen uh, Taylor, uh, Marketing Manager, also from uh, uh, along here today as well. So uh, yeah, we're going to be discussing um, shared ownership, uh, the basics, how it works. Um, and then Shireen's going to kind of look at uh, the impact of COVID-19 on the housing market and uh, run you through a couple of the uh, uh, developments that we've got. Um, for you to have a look at. So uh, let's get started. So what is uh, shared ownership? Shared ownership is a government-backed uh, scheme that allows you to buy a share in a home between 25 and 75%. Uh, typically, um, people tend to buy sort of 35, 40%, depending on uh, what's the maximum share that they can, can afford. And then you pay rent, uh, discounted rent, on, on that remaining share that you don't own. You only actually need a deposit um, for the share that you're going to buy, meaning you could own your first home with a deposit as little as £5,000, which obviously is much less than if uh, you're going to be buying the, uh, the property on the open market. You then get a mortgage to make up the, uh, the rest of the share that you can buy, um, and uh, you can increase your share at any time, all the way up to 100% if you want to do so. But it's a great flexible um, product meaning that you don't actually have to um, buy it outright if you don't want to. You can um, stay on the initial share for as long as you like. Um, another question we get a lot is um, how easy it fit to, uh, to sell um, and move on. The answer is it's really quite easy. Um, we have a whole department uh, ready to help you find um, a buyer for your share. And there is a healthy kind of secondhand uh, share ownership market out there. So uh, don't, you don't need to worry about that. Um, so, um, are you eligible? So what you need to consider is that there's generally some kind of high level um, eligibility criteria for shared ownership no matter where you're, you're looking to buy. It's usually, price is usually given to serving military personnel um, and often there, there's a requirement to have a local connection um, to the development um, that you're looking to buy into, um, whether that's uh, living in the local borough or, or working in the local borough. But uh, have a look uh, at the developments and uh, what we could be able to tell you um, if there is any kind of local connection and requirements because it's not always the case. And as long as your income is under the maximum income uh, threshold, so outside London that's 80,000 and inside London that's 90,000, um, then, then you, you meet that criteria. A couple of other ones you need to be aware of is um, you're not, uh, you should be unable to buy a property on the open market that meets your, your needs um, and you shouldn't already own another property. If you do, you'll need to be uh, in the process of selling that property before you can actually uh, buy a share of another share of property. Uh, you'll need access to savings. So as I mentioned before, you'll need that um, deposit uh, of around about £5,000 and it will vary depending on, on the, the value of the property. But you also need between four and five thousand pounds to cut the actual cost of, of buying, which I'll go through in a little bit more detail in, uh, in a minute. 
Outside London, you also need to register with local health to buy agents. Uh, again, we can put you in touch with them if you're unsure as to which uh, um, your, your local health to buy agent is. Inside London, that doesn't apply. You, you, uh, there is no health to buy agent in, in London anymore. It's also recommended that you uh, have an independent financial assessment done and to determine um, the specific property you're interested in, you meet those um, affordability criteria and before coming along for, for new viewing. So the costs or all the fees that you'll need to pay. Um, so remember, I mentioned that uh, you'll need about four to five thousand pounds to cover these. That figure doesn't include slam duty, um, but the others um, you can take for um, the other items that I've listed there. So um, your mortgage product arrangement fees, and possibly valuation fee. Where some products, um, as you waiver the uh, valuation fee, we also recommend that you uh, get in touch with a a specialist um, mortgage advisor that specializes in shared ownership and they'll be able to source the best shared ownership mortgage out there in, in the market for you but obviously they do they do charge a fee but it is it, worth every penny um, it's also advisable that you take out insurance so that if uh, for whatever reason you're not able to, to um, keep paying your, your mortgage repayments and you can claim on, on the insurance and then you have your, your uh, normal removal costs you know, hiring kind of man and van, that, that sort of thing. On top of that, uh, we also recommend that you uh, instruct a solicitor for free to instruct whichever solicitor you, you want. But what we always suggest is that you uh, instruct a solicitor that specializes in shared energy conveyancing because it is slightly different to, uh, to normal conveyancing. So it's always best to, um, to appoint a solicitor that, that specializes in shared energy. They obviously will charge a fee for that, but again, it's, it's worth doing. We'll also be able to advise to you once you have um, secured a property whether you're uh, liable to pay stamp duty or not, because it does depend on the value of, uh, of the property. Now, another question we get asked quite a bit is, is how, uh, how to make yourself mortgage ready. Um, there's a couple of things you can do um, to uh, make you more attractive and, and get better um, products open um, for you. Uh, main one really to, to think about is, is it's worth paying off any um, outstanding loans you have, be that kind of personal loans, car loan, or, or even student loan. If, if you're able to do that, it's, it's worth doing that before trying to get a, a mortgage. Um, the, the lenders will look more favourably if, if you don't have any outstanding loans. Likewise, it's worth uh, keeping on top of any regular payments, kind of mobile phone bills, utility bills, that sort of thing. If you start getting into debt, then that will affect your credit rating and it. And, potential will affect your ability to, uh, to obtain a mortgage. One key bit of advice I, I would uh, suggest is, uh, is making sure that you're on the electoral roll for the place you're actually currently living in. You know, you might have moved around quite a bit but since the, the last election. Um, it doesn't matter whether you actually intend to vote or not, but it is worth um, making sure that you're on the electoral roll for the, the, your current place of residence. Um, and then uh, regular savings. is. It's worth being able to demonstrate to a lender that you're you're uh, putting some money aside each month. So if you haven't already done so, open up a, uh, a savings account, even if you're only putting in sort of fifty pounds a month. It's, it's worth doing, and, and it'll help towards that deposit payment as well. And then lastly, um, what we'd recommend is is checking on your credit rating. There's lots of uh, free ways to do that these days. Lots of companies of the ability for you to, um, to find out what your credit rating is and, and regularly check on it. It's worth doing um, so that you're, um, it, it will raise any issues that you possibly might have um, before you then apply for that mortgage. And now I'm going to hand over to Shireen to talk you through the next so a few slides. Hello everybody, um, as Jane says, my name is Shireen, Shireen Taylor, I am Marketing Manager at Southern Home Ownership. Um, so I'm going to take you through um, just the impact of COVID-19 on the housing market. I think in just to start with, in terms of what we sort of get as a main question is, did COVID-19 affect the, the property prices? Well, for us, um, what we can say is that we have not seen a rise or a fall in valuations. Um, but what the main thing that we did have to do was adapt our services, basically. For us, lockdown meant that we were unable to host physical viewings, so open days and 
uh, one-to-one -one viewings. So for us, the main thing for us is to, was to look out for alternative ways of how we can still deliver a service to our customer. Customers, sorry. <laughs> So we looked at solutions of how we can get that done. Uh, fly through videos were one of the main things that, that we did. Um, for us, in terms of a team in general, um, we were able to continue to work and work at home. So um, the main thing obviously was to do a virtual way for customers to view our properties. Fly throughs are a great way for customers to view our homes. Uh, we have uh, fly through, sorry, fly through view, uh, videos available on the refinery. So this allows you to do a walkthrough of the property and look at some of the finer details in terms of specification um, and, and a look at our balconies and sort of some of the interior designing of, of, our, of our, our, our properties. We also looked at personal viewings. So moving forward, obviously post um, not post COVID-19, but now lockdown has actually re reduced and there's less restrictions. We're looking at ways that we can still accommodate our customers and still provide our services and be and at a convenience to them also. Um, so personal video tours is, some, is a way that we're going to do that. So our sales consultants will be on site at our developments and be able to do video calls to any of our clients looking to do uh, a video tour of our apartments. They'll take you through all the financial details and all the finer details of you know our apartments and what you would need to do to buy one um again just going on the physical fact of um you know people maybe being a little bit more skeptical about physical viewings we're looking to in incorporate interactive 360 virtual tours this will give you a chance to really zoom in on some of our specifications and find out more about what we have to offer um, and alongside that We'll be looking at ways that we can do contactless completions. This will allow us to do online um, signatures, so you can sign your your sales completions um, documents online. And we can also look at ways where we can hand over keys where there's less contact. For us, the main thing is about safety. It's about safety of our staff and safety of you, our customers. So we're going to look at as many ways as possible that we can definitely deliver our service in the best and high quality as possible, but make sure that everybody's safe while doing so. So just to take you through some of our developments, I'll start with our newly launched, the Hamptons. So the Hamptons is located within the South Downs area of Hove. Uh, it's an amazing selection of uh, two and three bedroom apartments. We have 10 available currently. Um, and they are actually available for off-plan reservation. So the properties at the, at the Hamptons, they start from £110,000 and we're set to launch our apartments, of one, our one and two bedroom apartments in the coming months. Also within the East, East Sussex area, we have Artisan. Artisan is available from £110,000 and it's at, sorry, at a 35% share. We offer a selection of one, two and three bedroom apartments in the Seven Dials area. We've got a little video coming up here. Sorry, just rush that a little bit. So through this video, you'll see a few um, shots of our artisan show home. But yeah, it's, it's basically located in an amazing area with local ca uh, cafes and food shops. The Sorry, one moment, please. Hi everyone, sorry, I think we just lost Shireen for a second. Uh, if you bear with us, we are just going to try and get her back. I'm not sure if she's had some connection issues or if there was just some sound in the background there that she's trying to um, stifle. So if you bear with us, give us a couple of seconds and we'll be back on as soon as possible. Apologies for that. We had a bit of interference in the background. Um, so, yeah, we're going through the artisan. So the artisan, as I said, is amazing um, views. We also have amazing views from our rooftop apartments and you have views of uh, Brighton, uh, Brighton Beach. And we move on to Montpellier Place. Montpellier Place 
is in an amazing location set literally within walking distance from Brighton and to the actual seafront. We have one last remaining two bedroom apartment at Montpellier Place and that starts from £115,000 at a 35% share. Lastly, within the East Sussex area, we have Preston Road. This offers a selection of one and two bedroom apartments. It's basically set within a newly refurbished Victorian villa. And we also, the development also hosts six three bedroom apartments, three bedroom houses, sorry. Um, and it's basically, the whole development is basically within walking distance to Preston Road stations where you can get to Brighton within minutes and to, and to London within an hour. I think the video is still rolling for Preston Road. So I'll let that go. So that's done there. So in the London area, we have quite a few properties. Refinery is one of them. So Refinery is in our East London, is an East London development in the East 16 area of West Sil Silvertown. We've got another video popping up here. It offers one and two, one, two and three bedroom apartments with open plan living and integrated appliances. The refinery delivers contemporary, de contemporary design throughout and is a stone throw away from the town station. With fast links to London City Airport and Canary Wharf, literally minutes away. This is available to view now. This can be available, this can be viewed by a physical appointment or by a video call. Homes at refinery start from £112,000 with at a 35% share. Then we move on to Ilford Works. I'm going to cue this video this time because I keep forgetting to do that. <laughs> so the video is just going to come up now. Amazing. So available at, at £87,500 at a 35% share, Ilford, Work offers, Ilford Works offers a selection of one bedroom apartments that we have available there. A very high specification, including open plan living, contemporary design throughout. From Ilford, work, from Ilford Station, it provides quick links to Stratford and Central London, as well as the up and coming or soon to be released, soon to open, sorry, Crosswell, which will be, have amazing links into Central London and Liverpool Street. So as well as that, there's fast track cycleway links through Wanstead, which will give you uh, links to London, Central London and Stratford. And also, Ilford Works is available to view now via video call or physical viewing. We have our final two apartments or developments, Bow River Village. Phase two of this community-led development offers our last remaining two-bedroom apartment from £116,000. Located in the Bow area, E3, the Riverside development delivers integrated appliances and amazing cycleways along the River Lee. Finally, we have Gormont Apartments, located in the very sought-after area of Hammersmith and Fulham. Gormont Apartment offers a selection of two and three bedroom apartments, six in total, and it starts from £227,000 at a 35% share. All of our properties are available via, via our website. A link is soon to be showing in the, the right-hand corner. Um, if you click the link, you can actually visit our website and um, you'll be able to register your interest for any of the properties that we have available. Again, Refinery and Ilford Works are available to view now and potentially Bow River Village also. So to work our way through our website, we visit www.shosales.co.uk and you can register your interest via our website for all of our developments. You simply by clicking new homes and entering the area that you want to live, live in and you press search. Once you've done that, it will bring you onto the development page and you'll be able to view our floor plans and also virtual tours if they're available for that development. As a part of the process, um, we do encourage all of our applicants to do financial assessments. It will be outlined within any sort of email that um, communication that you receive from us when you register for our for our properties and we'd also request that you complete a property a property preference form 
this allows you to basically um, input the details of the property that you're interested in buying. Within that, as I said, our pro where we're available, we have properties that can you can book a viewing for, whether it's physical or in person with our friendly sales team. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to your questions. Hi, yeah, sorry, I'm just going to close this presentation for you and we've got James back. Um, guys, that was amazing. That was really, really helpful. I can see, I know I say this every week, but you've covered loads of all the questions that we've had coming through, actually, and especially kind of around, um, you know, prices amidst kind of COVID-19. And it's interesting that, you, like, like you said, you said, we've seen the same thing. Nothing's really increased, decreased. We've stayed very steady and that's actually very promising, I think, for buyers who, you know, could be concern that it's a slightly turbulent time so it's nice to know that kind of uh that we're on the right track and we're all getting back to normal again now so that was amazing we're going to jump straight into the q a because we have had tons of questions through for you so we're going to start off the bat with emma who has asked how flexible are minimum salary requirements on shared ownership homes um i can answer this one um in regards to um, salaries and flexibility, um, in most cases, there is a minimum salary requirement for properties. However, um, if you speak to a financial advisor and you potentially have more of a deposit than you do your salary, in some cases, the shortfall in your salary can be made up by your deposit. Um, but in those cases, we'd, we'd encourage you to speak to a financial advisor. OK, so it's quite, it's quite a personal thing. It's kind of looking at your, your yeah. with the yeah. advisor, kind of taking it from there. OK, great. We yeah. have a question from Stephen, which is, can you sell your share back to the housing association if you want to move home? OK, so I'll take that one. Um, as I mentioned in the, in the slides earlier, we do actually have a whole department who, uh, who deals with what, what, what we call resales. Um, that means that we actually don't um, buy back um, anyone's share, but what we can do is, is help our our customers to actually find something to buy um, their share of the property so they can then move on to, to another property. Yeah, that's great. And I think it's really good for people to know as well that it's worth checking the terms of your lease for that kind of sale period, because when they are looking to sell a lot of housing associations, it can differ kind of the, um, the amount of time. But the housing association, so whether that be Southern Home Ownership or anyone else, will have generally um, a few weeks, a couple of months uh, to try and sell your property on your behalf. So that's because there's usually such a list of people waiting that they already know about and they can kind of try to push that forward for you. If at the end of that time they haven't sold it, then you can list it privately or with an estate agent. So it's worth kind of knowing that there's um, a little bit of a process there. So it's just worth being kind of aware of that from the get go. Um, then we had a question through on Facebook from a lady called Emily. And this might actually be one for me to take, which is I'm a shared owner who's looking to staircase. I'm considering both overpaying my current mortgage and putting aside savings for when I do come to remortgage so I can buy 100%. Uh, basically, what's our thoughts on that? Uh, Emily, the issue is, is that you really need to speak to a financial advisor. As a property portal and for Southern as a housing association, that's not really within our remit. And it's such a personal, individual situation. So what we would recommend off the bat is if you go on to sharedbuy.com, we actually have a staircasing calculator. So you can kind of put in all your details and you can see how much equity you've built in your property so far, kind of if you can afford the percentage share that you're looking to buy, whether that's going up 25%, going up 50%, going up to 100%. Um, and what we'd also say is on there, we have a list of financial advisors who have experience in shared ownership and staircasing. And that's really important. You, you want to go Generally speaking, you want to go with someone who kind of knows the the scheme, the product. So that would be my um, recommendations at this stage. Just kind of do your homework, speak to a financial advisor, and they'll be able to give you a bit more information. I hope that helps. Uh, and then back to you guys. We have a question from Rochelle who is asking, is it actually difficult to sell your share? Uh, no, I'll take that one. Uh, no, it's not at all. I mean, <laughs> I, what you've been saying is that it's, I think there's a lot of, um, misunderstanding about getting locked into shared ownership and not being able to then you get you get stuck there and then you're not able to to move on that's not my experience um i mean my personally i i was a shared owner um, and i sold um i well, actually bought a retail property um and when it came to the time for me to sell on i sold it back you know to the help through the housing association as well so there's such certainly in london there's such a um 
a big demand um, for shared ownership and there's a really healthy secondhand market. So yeah, um, it's, it's an easy process. That's so great that you were a shared owner yourself and that you've sold and you've kind of moved on from there. That's that's so great to hear. And actually, yeah. you've seen that in quite a few of these webinars, people who have just bought shared ownership, like the experts that are visiting us or they've sold their shared ownership property. And it's so good to hear firsthand from not only people that work in the sector and understanding, but that have actually lived through it and have gone through the process and the sales process. So that's really good for people to know. Uh, next question. So this is actually one we've received from a lot of people like Darren, Patty, loads of others as well which is basically, would I still be eligible for shared ownership if I've, ho if I've owned a property previously? Yes, um, as long as you don't currently own a property in terms of, or say currently, when you're actually going through the process of finalising the sale, as long as you do not own a property at that time, that is possible. And as long as they're selling, if they do own a property, they have to prove that they're selling the property, right? And will kind of be... Yes, sorry. They, that time. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Sorry. And I guess for people who are thinking that kind of process, as long as you still meet any eligibility criteria, like, because um, what we get a lot of is actual people in shared ownership homes that want to move to a slightly bigger shared ownership home because they've had a, a baby or their family's growing. Uh, they've got too many dogs yeah. now, that kind of thing. And they just need that little bit of extra space. So actually, if you're in that situation... If you're in a shared ownership property now you can still buy another one uh, as long as you're still in the process of selling your current one and you meet all the eligibility criteria so good to know yeah. uh, and then we actually had a question about affordability from jasmine who has asked do i need to be earning a certain amount depending on the area where i want to buy for example would i need to be on a different wage if i was buying in brentwood compared to london um the answer is that is it will very much vary depending on the property that you're looking at uh, buying. So, you know, if you do go and have a look at our um, our website, we actually don't have any properties in Brentwood, but you'll get an idea from that as to the income required. So it's it's more um, driven by the price of the property rather than rather than the area. But obviously, as you get chain, you get variations in in values from from one area to the other. You will see that difference as well. Yeah, and I guess it's development to development as well. So you have lots of different properties in um, in Sussex. Actually, they could have different price points, different affordability, kind of minimum wages, that sort of thing, depending yeah. on I guess the size of development, the kind of um, the the facilities available. So it's worth having a look at lots of different developments in the area where you're looking to buy to get a kind of clear understanding of that. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely. Uh, Novlet has asked: Is there an age limit for the shared ownership scheme? Um, I'll answer that one. Uh, the honest answer is no, there isn't. Um, you need to, generally speaking, it's designed that you need to be able to obtain a mortgage. Um, so that might limit you. Um, but some lenders will lend up to, you know, uh, the age of 70 now. So in essence, no, and there is no upper age limit. I think we spend a lot of time talking about shared ownership being for first time buyers that tend to be the kind of in their 20s and 30s, but I've sold um, shareship properties to people well into their sort of 50s and 60s. That's great. So like you said, as long as you can get a mortgage, so that'd be the 18 and over kind of area. And um, not every housing association offers it, but a lot of um, them do do something called older person shared ownership, which is specifically for kind of 55s and above. And there's some different kind of um, rules and regulations that go around that. Same general eligibility, but there's more differences in kind of um, the ages and stuff. So anyone over the age of uh, 55 that's looking to buy shared ownership is also worth having a look at that as well, because there's um, some different kind of developments available as well. That's great. So then Amin has asked, can I apply for a home which is bigger than the size of my family? Yes, you can. <laughs> um, there used to be restrictions um, in regards to family sizes, size in, in terms of a single person having a two bed or a, and that potentially going to someone with a child or, or, a, or some form of dependent. Uh, in some cases, it can depend on the area that you're living in. Mm -hmm. um, but in most cases, it, it, that is no longer the case. Um, you can actually buy a property bigger than what you need, well, what you physically might see to be need. <laughs> need. So, yeah. I imagine we'll also see a surge in this now, given the current climate and the current situation with so many people working from home. Actually, people who are in one beds might go, God, like, I'm, I don't have kids. I'm not planning on having kids, but I could really do with a home office, that kind of thing. So I think we'll probably see yeah. that as well. Yeah. You, know, you can always have a games room. 
doesn't have to be an office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've still got loads of questions coming through guys thank you so much keep them coming uh Nuruddin has asked uh oh no sorry that was yeah Nuruddin can I buy any home on the market through shared ownership so does the scheme apply to every property and uh, no so you'll find generally speaking shared ownership is restricted to either second-hand and um, shared ownership um, properties or brand new like the ones that we showed you today. So you can't go and find um, um, a house through an estate agent and, and do shared ownership on it, unfortunately. Now, you, you are restricted in that sense, but there's plenty of properties out there to choose from within those restrictions. Great. And this is a question from Natalie, but also I've seen a spike in this since I mentioned about getting a bigger house for dogs, which is, are pets allowed in shared ownership properties? I'll let you. I'll let you take that one. You can <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> as a dog owner, um, I should say. I mean, very much. <laughs> uh, it, it very much depends on the property, um, and um, we would always say, look, um, bring that up at the viewing um, because it will be on a case by case basis. So, you know, obviously, if you want to buy an, an apartment on the tenth floor. Um, um, of refinery, for example, in East London, that's probably not very pet friendly, and we would probably suggest that no, that's not going to be possible. But something like uh, the Hamptons, uh, one of the houses there that got their own front door and back garden, that's obviously far more uh, pet friendly. And here at Southern, we, we have our own uh, um, approval process that we, we have to go through. But yes, it will very much depend on, on, on the property. So it's just flagging it as early as possible, especially if you already own. Uh, a cat or a dog say um i imagine necessarily a hamster's not such a an issue or a goldfish but those kind of ones that are going to be running around potentially annoying the downstairs neighbors if you're in flats um or i guess if a you and you just ask that outright if you don't own a dog yet but you want to can i have a pet here that kind of thing it's just getting kind of organized ahead and asking the right questions at the viewings which i think is really important for buyers right we've still got loads coming in so another one pretty much if i own a property abroad am i still eligible for shared ownership um, if you own a property anywhere in the world, that disqualifies you from doing shared ownership unless you're prepared to sell it. If you sell it, and that then means you can't afford to buy a property in this country where you need to buy, and then you'll then be eligible. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's in England or Spain or halfway across the world, as long as you own a property, you have to be selling it to be eligible to buy here. Absolutely. Good yeah. to know. Sorry, I've got so many questions coming in. I'm trying to answer as many that we're getting like a lot of through. Uh, we already kind of covered this a little bit earlier while I was saying, but can I move to another shared ownership property if I'm already in one? I imagine with Southern, that's the same. Yes, you can just be selling. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Great. So, yes, yes, you can. Uh, um, we have a few people kind of asking about rent. So how do you calculate the rent? Will this increase over time? Um, do you have any kind of calculations on that that you could share with us? Okay, yeah, so um, we work out what the rent is initially. So um, again, it's all very clear on, on, on sort of our prices that we're able to, to distribute. Again, it will vary from, from development to development and in some cases from property to property. General rule of thumb is it tends to be 2.75% um, of the unsold equity. So uh, generally speaking, the um, more of the property you own, the less the rent will be. Um, and then that rent figure is then reviewed um, every year. So again, it's all outlined in, in the lease, but you'll be notified as, as one of our leaseholders um, each kind of before each April as to what your rent's going to be for the following year. Okay, fantastic. And we have a question from Sophia. So this is on the kind of service charge side of things. If I purchase a shared ownership house rather than a flat, would I still need to pay service charge? And if so, how would these charges, but what, why would I be paying them in a, in a house, in a larger development, that kind of thing? Again, I'll take that one. It's, oh. it's, <laughs> okay. it's, um, it's very much dependent on scheme specific um, developments. So um, Preston Road, for example, that Shreen mentioned earlier, we've got houses there. Um, those um have some nice landscape gardens around them so there is a service charge there um because you'll be paying to upkeep those nice communal gardens as well so that's an example where 
um, because you're part of a wider estate, there will be an estate charge that, that we connect through as a service charge. Fantastic. That's really good to know. Uh, we've probably got time for a couple more questions. I don't want to um, flood you guys with them. I know you're answering them very quickly for us, so you're you're getting through loads of them. Um, just kind of backtracking to what I was saying about older person shared ownership. We've had a couple of people asking if Southern actually provide older person shared ownership. Is that something you guys do? It's not something we, um, we're we doing um, in the immediate future, but uh, never say never. If we, if we do, it will certainly we'll be advertising it on, on our website. Okay, fantastic. In the meantime, to the few of you I can see that are asking about it, you can go to sharedby.com. When you do a search for properties, you can actually use a filter for over 55 shared ownership and they'll bring you everything within your local area. So feel free to have a look there in the meantime. Uh, just have a look for the next ones. If I buy as a single person and then get into a relationship later down the line, can my partner move in with me? This is from a current shared owner who's in their property. They fall in love. Want to move someone in? What's what's the rule? <laughs> Do you want to take that one, Shui? COVID. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it is. It is possible. Um, it is possible. As a shared owner, you are the owner of your property. Um, I think a lot of people believe that you know because you're a shared ownership, you have to ask a lot of permission in terms of personal things that go on within your home. That's not the case. So yes, your your partner can move in. Fantastic. <laughs> I think it would be uh, awful of us if we said they couldn't. <laughs> Maybe not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then one question we actually get quite a lot of, and I know it's a little bit intricate um, kind of with uh, kind of uh, shared ownership and first time buyer states and stuff. But basically, do first time buyers have to pay stamp duty? Um, I'll take that one. Um, right. It's, okay. <laughs> it's uh, again, it's very specific to the value of, of the property. So what we would suggest, um, because they, they change the rules of stamp duty kind of on a kind of regular basis so we would always advise that you you, you seek particular legal advice once you kind of reserved a, a property um then then any kind of shared ownership um solicitor will be able to advise whether you can whether you actually have to pay um stand duty on it or whether you can defer it to when you're only 100 percent fab and another one that we get quite a lot as well a few people asking can they decorate a shared ownership home and what about renovations and kind of extensions and stuff like that so with uh, shared ownership homes if you're buying from a new build in terms of it being brand new we would usually say that you wait until after the defects period um that is just to make sure that your your guarantee is still is still there if there's anything that you do majorly within your home we can we're still liable to actually fix that um so the answer is yes, but we do recommend that you wait until after the defects period has passed. That's fab. So that's kind of the the decorating side. You can paint walls, you can hang pictures, uh, hang pictures. Just wait till that defect period. Yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But then with extension. In terms of major. Yeah. Major extension. In terms of extensions, you're probably looking at in terms of having a house. So that's likely to be the case. Just with any sort of council, you need planning permission. So that's something that you would need to do in terms of going to your local authority. If it is something quite major, you would need to speak to your um, your house, housing association. And I think one of the main things is anything that you're going to do in terms of making changes to your home, um, to be to look at the lease basically. The lease will basically outline whether or not that is possible, or and what you would need to do and permissions that you would need to ask. And I guess that would also apply for, say, fitting a new kitchen or if you wanted to rip up the flooring and that would be potentially there's underfloor heating and they, it could damage that and stuff. So just always double checking at least, always double yeah. checking with you guys or whoever your housing yeah. association is. But you're free to paint and hang pictures and kind of make it your own still. It's not like a rental property. Yeah. You, there's, I think that's a common misconception is, you know, I'm, I'm still paying to a landlord, whether that be a housing association or not. And that's... Yeah decorate so i'm still stuck in what feels like student digs and that's just not the case in any way shape or form um no not at all so another question we've had is can you negotiate on shared ownership prices funny enough i got that asked um earlier today in fact um so uh, with shared ownership properties 
Um, part of the government guidelines that we had to follow is that we had to sell them based on an independent um, valuer who, who comes around and values all of our, our brand new properties. And the process is very similar when you come to resell as well. So the short answer is no, but there's a very good reason for that. It's because we have to sell them at market value um, and that's determined by an independent value. So your point of view as a, as a buyer, you know for sure that you're actually buying that property based at market value, not an overinflated value. Fantastic. And we'll rounding up shortly. So just to end on, I know you kind of touched on it earlier, but where can we find out about Southern homes you have available? Uh, what's the best way for people to go about that? So the best way to go about that is to visit our website, which is www.shosales.co.uk. You'll find out all you need to know about shared ownership, our processes, and most important, importantly, our development. That's perfect. Well, guys, thank you so much. You've actually been amazing. You've got through an extraordinary amount of questions. Thank you. You've helped a lot of people today. <laughs> what I will say to everyone that did ask a question that it hasn't been answered, I'm really sorry. We just... We don't have enough time to get through all of them. There's hundreds of them. But what we are doing, uh, you can access it on the website, but what, we'll also send you a link uh, via email for everyone that's registered. We've got this huge space on Shared Buyer, which is dedicated to these webinars and the questions we've been getting. So anything you have asked uh, could have already been answered on there. Have a look there. If not, in the next couple of days, we'll be updating. We'll be working with Southern to kind of answer as many questions as possible and we'll get those live for you. If you can't find your question in the next couple of days, feel free to contact us on social. We're shared by across the board and we'll help you out from there as well. Um, this session has also been recorded. This will be going live on shareedby.com this evening. And um, again, you'll get links to this. Uh, we'll send you out kind of an email with a bit of a roundup. Uh, so you can watch that if you didn't have time to take notes or you wanted to revisit some stuff or have another look over the slides, you'll be able to do so. Um, in the meantime, we will be back next Thursday, so the 11th of June with So Resi, and I believe that's at 5 p.m. Keep an eye on sharedtobite.com and our social media channels for registration information. Um, and in the meantime, thank you again so much, guys. Thank you to everyone that watched for the questions and to the great team at Southern who answered so many of your questions. And keep safe. And thank, we'll see you. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.